In this video, we will look at drawing influence lines for reaction and moment. So we know the influence line will help us determine the reaction, shear, or moment that can be generated by a moving load at a specific point. So we will use the Moiler brush law principle to visually draw our influence lines. So we will use the following figure where we start with the diagram and move to the right. So on the left side, we have the starting diagram, essentially the condition we're looking at. Here, it's going to be a simple beam for this case. Here, it's still the same beam. And here, we just added a roller at the end because we're considering reactions. First, we will look at our starting diagram, our initial condition. So the first thing we're going to look at is essentially finding the influ influence line, let's say, at the middle of the beam. So that's our starting diagram here. Then we move on to the next step, which is to release the structure. What does that mean? So for a moment, let's say we're asked to find the moment at the center of the beam, we are going to introduce a hinge. That's all we do. You just introduce a hinge so we know we will have rotation, right? The hinge here will separate out this piece and it will separate out this piece. Essentially, we just broke up the pieces and we will have some kind of rotation, right? So that's what we do by adding a hinge for a moment. We always release the structure by introducing a hinge if we want to find the moment influence line at this particular location, right? We're looking at the center. So we add it at the center. Then after we release the structure, we move on to our step here where we apply a unit deformation. So it's a single unit deformation and here our unit deformation is going to be considered as rotation, right? So what we will have on this side is 0 0.5 because a unit is just one. And on this side, we will have 0 0.5. And we also know that this angle is going to be just one. So we're looking at rotation and that's what happens when we introduce a hinge. So we have a unit deformation of one and we're assuming the positive sign convention. So we have to apply a moment here that goes counterclockwise on the left side and on the right side we apply a moment that goes clockwise because let's look at our positive sign convention we know for a moment if we make a section cut the left side is going to be counterclockwise and the right side of this is going to be clockwise this is what we consider a positive sign convention so we have to stick with that when we apply our moment so we know here when this moment is induced based on our positive sign convention, on the top we will have compression and on the bottom we will have tension. So that's that for moments. Now let's look at the starting diagram when we consider shear. We're trying to look at the shear and we're still considering the middle here. And let's say we want to draw the shear influence line. What do we do for shear? We introduce something called a vertical roller so we introduce a vertical roller at the middle here and that's how this should look like it's a vertical roller that's allowed to go up and down right on both sides picture this side of the beam it can go down right and this side can go up vertically upwards then we do the same step the last step after releasing the structure we move on to unit deformation of one we assume the positive sign convention so on the right side, we move up 0 0.5. So this is our starting position, right? And we will apply a unit deformation up of 0 0.5. And on the left side, this is our starting position. And we will go down negative 0 0.5. And on the bottom, since we're going down, it's going to be negative. And this will give us a total sum of unit deformation of one. So it's a unit deformation. On the right side, it's 0 0.5. On the left side, we go down 0 0.5. And again, we're assuming the positive sign convention here for shear. That's what we do in, the, in this last step. And lastly, the reaction. Let's say we have this beam, our starting diagram here. We have a roller at the end. For the reaction, we always remove the restraint. Here, the only restraint is going to be what? My reaction in the Y due to that roller. So what I'm going to do is just remove this 
essentially take out the roller here and remove this vertical constraint. Then after that, we apply the unit deformation as our last step, and it's going to be just one, right? So the unit deformation is going to be upwards of one. It's always going to be one. And that's all for these. This is what we have to essentially apply in order to draw the influence line. So let's see this in application. So, so if we look at this FE type question, for the beam shown, select the influence line for the reaction at B. So we have our beam diagram, and we will select A, B, C, D. So what's happening here is this is the reaction at B. As we have a moving load, let's say you have essentially a car that goes across this beam here we have a vehicle that goes across this beam how does the reaction at B change due to this moving load as it moves across the beam right it ends at D how does the reaction at B change along the y-axis right the zeros here this is positive this is negative and we're moving along the X. The moving load is moving across the beam. How does the reaction at B change? And that's what the influence line is going to tell us. So here we're looking strictly at a reaction. So we have to apply what steps? We have to apply these steps for reactions. So we're looking at this diagram for a reaction. We remove the vertical constraint. Then at the end, we apply a unit deformation of one. That's simple for reactions, right? So now, we're looking at B, right? We're focusing on B. So we know at B we have a reaction, BY, and we know we have to remove this vertical constraint. We have to eliminate this. So our new diagram would essentially look something like this. And we have at the end a pin. So this pin at D is still there, but we just removed this ver the roller, the vertical constraint we remove that then after re we remove that what do we do we apply this unit deformation of one so we have to apply a unit deformation of one here and let's say B is right over here we apply a unit deformation and it's gonna be upwards of one so then after the unit deformation we have to understand that we have to respect our boundary conditions right here we lo no longer have a roller, but we still have a pin. The pin is still here. So we know here we cannot displace vertically upwards or downwards, but we can have a rotation, but we cannot move up, down, right, left. We cannot have any form of displacement at this pin. So we know we can have rotation and we know we just applied a unit deformation up. So our new diagram would look something like this and this essentially would be our influence line so we will have an influence line that looks like this and we know at B it's one and we can also calculate the height here so essentially this is the maximum the reaction that BY can have as a moving load is moving across the beam we can calculate this by using just similar triangles so let's say I'm looking at this big triangle first this entire triangle and we know the entire triangle is going to have a base of what 6 plus 4 plus 4 so it's going to be 6 plus 8 which is 14 so entire base here it's going to be 14 and we know that I'm going to compare it to this smaller triangle, which is the, what, it's the 4 plus 4, 8. This is 8 feet. So we just do similar triangles. The big triangle is going to be Y over the 14. And we have equals to the small triangle, the Y, the vertical distance, which is 1 over the 8. So now you just solve for y and for that you should get 1.7575 here. So y is 1.75. So this is the maximum reaction as a moving load is moving across the beam and it's specific for the reaction at B, right? 
that's the maximum so based on the answer choices and this influence line we just drew here the correct one would be b so it's not a and if we look at c it wouldn't be c nor can it be d so it must be b in this case the influence line for the reaction at b right and we know this is going to be 1.0 and the maximum here which we just determined is 1.75 so for the same question let's change our perspective here and we will apply the same principles we have a roller at b a pin at d we remove the roller, apply a unit deformation, and we have a deformed shape with rotation about point D. Now let's draw the influence line for a moment, right? So for the beam shown, select the influence line for the moment at C. So we're looking at C now, the moment at C. So what do we do for moments? Let's go back. We know for moment. So first we look at the starting diagram, which is going to be determined the moment at C in our figure, in our question. Then we release the structure by introducing a hinge for the moment, for the moment influence line. We always introduce a hinge. Then we apply our moment, right? And this would cause a unit rotation of 0 0.5 on this side, 0 0.5 on this side, or a total of 1, right? 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is going to be a unit deformation of 1. And don't forget, we're looking at the positive sign convention. So it's going to essentially rotate in this manner. So now we will look at this. We're looking at C. And we know we're going to introduce a hinge here. So let's redraw our figure. We have this. We have D is on this side. And B is going to be somewhere here. This is B. And A is here. And we know we're introducing a hinge, right? We add this hinge. So this is our hinge at C. Because we're looking at the moment at C. So that's the hinge there at C. Now we have to ask what's going to happen. How are we going to deform essentially? How would this beam deform? So the first thing I notice is this hinge is going to be separated out into two pieces. The hinge will cause separation of two pieces. This side and this side. This is what the hinge is going to do. So what's going to happen here is when we apply the moment, we're going to apply a positive moment sign convention. On the left, it's going to be counterclockwise. And on the right, it's going to be clockwise. When we apply that at a specific time, we know our new line and deformation is going to look something like this. We will peak out at this point. We will come back to zero because we know at the pin and the roller we cannot displace. We always have to come back to zero. Pin, rollers, and pins, you cannot have any form of displacement. You always have to come back to zero. That's our boundary condition. And we know here this would also deform in this manner. So we will come back down here and this would be our new shape. When we have this hinge in introduced and apply the moment, we will have a peak here and essentially this side would rotate to this new position. And we know this side, the right side of the hinge, would rotate to this new position. And lastly, we know that this is 0 0.5 and this is 0 0.5. And we also know that this is 1. So that's that. So this is our essentially our influence line shape. And based on that, we will have, I believe, C. So that should be our answer for this one. So now let's finish off this question by looking at the same beam. But here we're looking to determine the moment at C. So we have to redo this introduce a hinge at C, then we apply the moment, then we have our final shape for the influence line.